Alrighty, everyone. Today we are going to be back with some more Planet Zoo. Uh, because, yeah, why not? Planet Zoo's great. Uh, so we're going to kind of go over some of the things that I've done off camera, which is a lot and also isn't a lot. Uh, and then we'll kind of dive back into managing our zoo. But let's go ahead and switch over to game view mode. So flip that over. And we're just going to use the normal soundtrack. So the reason why I haven't been streaming is it has been super duper hot where I'm at, like 113 degrees or warmer uh, by about 12, 1 p like 12, 1 p.m. So early in the afternoon, not late in the afternoon, it's that hot. Uh, so unfortunately, uh, my computer is not able to thermally regulate and because the air conditioning or whatever, like it's too hot basically. So I can't play Planet Zoo. Uh, when it gets that hot, otherwise my computer crashes, and so there's no point in trying to stream. Uh, so anyway, basically what we've done here, last time we added in some Venturongs, which I'm trying to find one of the little fellas. But this is one of our baby sun bears. There's one. They're kind of like a little otter looking dude. They're pretty cool. But we added these boyos in. Uh, we need a little bit more hard shelter for them, it looks like, which is fine. I can manage that fairly easily. Uh, but with the addition of these guys, we built this little platform when we first added them in the last episode. I added a feeder up top. I've redone the trees and plants and stuff on this side and a little bit on this side because these dudes want a lot of coverage. Uh, so before adding in all these trees and such, these guys were super stressed out, feeling like they couldn't hide anywhere. Um, but adding these trees seems to have fixed that issue, so hopefully that remains constant and they don't suddenly get stressed again or whatever. But what I'm going to do to expand their hard shelter coverage is I am going to come over here and I am just going to go into our climbing set and an enrichment yeah it is enrichment item um so i'm gonna go in pull this guy up rotate it a little bit and we're just gonna make like a secondary platform almost uh and kind of try to match it a little bit better than what we're doing uh this will just expand the amount of covered area inside the habitat that has bedding and that will improve that hard shelter requirement stat for our little bit turongs um I mean, we had sufficient when it was just the bears, and we probably had a little bit more than sufficient when it was just the bears. So I'm assuming that these guys need their own separate space from the bears, and that's why it says we don't have enough, which is perfectly acceptable, you know, kind of a reasonable expectation. I wouldn't want to have to share the same bed and shelter with the bear when I'm, you know, like an otter type thing. I just feel like it wouldn't be that great. However, they are, uh, you know, like compatible or chill with one another, like no bears have come over and bothered the Benturongs. I mean, the baby sun bear came over and kind of like walked near them, but nothing crazy has happened yet. They are supposed to be compatible, so I don't really expect anything too crazy to occur. But something interesting to note, I guess. Um, you know what? I actually don't want to use this one. I want to use a smaller platform and kind of use this to bridge out this little gap here with the hopes that it will maybe provide them with the means of kind of using this as a secondary ramp almost. But kind of just to round out the corners a little bit too. I don't want... Yeah, kind of like this. Uh, I need to adjust the angle a little bit and raise it. Pull it out like so. Okay, cool. So we'll do something like that. And now that I've got the first angle kind of set, I can expand this down kind of like so just to give a little bit more shelter and then okay so that's probably enough space what i need to do here is raise this terrain just slightly uh, so it's no longer submerged uh, i might need to remove the water sorry friends um oh, well there were definitely some swimming over there so we're just going to raise it to begin with, and then I'm going to flatten it. So I believe that's the tool I want. Yeah, this basically 
wherever you start the circle at is the foundation level and it will adjust whatever terrain is nearby to meet that level. So what I can do here is kind of extend all of this out just a little bit to give our friendos some shelter. And it kind of makes a little water cave, which is kind of cool. I don't think I can go up that high. Let's maybe try placing it over here. If I do that, it's still not quite what I want. What it, if I put it down like that? That's pretty, that's a lot shallower. So it does need to be up here. So I need to pull this up a little bit higher is what that means. Uh, so we probably can use this flattened foundation. Let's raise that a little bit. We're probably going to have to terrain paint in just a moment. So we'll cover that in just a sec. Let's try that. Okay, yeah. So that definitely increased the land. As far as terrain painting goes, uh, first I need to click this little guy in here. So they're okay on the terrain. They could use more soil though. So I'm just going to go through with some light soil and get rid of this long grass. And we'll maybe put in a little bit of smooth rock. A little bit of fine sand. Just to balance it a little bit. So it's not completely different from the terrain. The other thing I can do is throw in just a little tiny bit of short grass. Like so. And now it kind of looks a little bit more similar to the rest of the habitat. Uh, let's go ahead and throw in the bedding and call this good. Um, so large bedding, large bedding, large bedding. Okay, now if I click on this guy, you do typically need to unpause for them to register. Oh, why did they all just get boxed? What the heck? What happened on that? I mean, we didn't break anything too crazy. Is it because I removed the water? It's probably because I removed the water. Shoot, that sucks. Uh, animals. Did it, like, what, where did they go though? If I click on this guy. So they're back at the entrance. So were the bears, okay, cool. They're fine now. Um, so as you can see, the hard shelter updated now, and they are content. We're just going to save real quick, uh, just in case something crazy happens with the stream, we don't lose all this progress. But there we go. This habitat's pretty much the way I want it. Good to go. Let's move on. So I want to add in our red pandas today. So this is the exhibit I kind of plan or intend on using for the red pandas. So let's go ahead and send these guys in there. It should be large enough as far as I'm aware and yeah we're just gonna go ahead and deliver them and then we're probably gonna dive in and do a little build sequence thing where we build this out um i do have some lemurs in our trade center i need to get the female variants is what i need to do that way i can have a breeding pair of each and they're gonna go in our other habitat that's next door but let's see lemur ringtail confirm female confirm pause for a second while we look oh wow there's a bunch today when i look so i was gonna stream yesterday but then my computer started getting glitchy so i didn't uh but there are some in here so i think we're gonna go with this guy decent ish stats let's take a look on the red rough tail instead because there were like there was one female of these yesterday now there's like a list that's great because the one that was available was like four or five thousand of the tokens, which I just don't have at the moment. Um, this one's not bad for 150. I think we're going to do that. Sure. So now we've got a breeding pair of each of these lemurs. We can throw all of them into our habitat enclosure area over here. And this is ultimately going to be a guest walkthrough habitat. Now, we're going to try to get this one done after we finish our pandas. Um, but I want to get the pandas all up and running first. Uh, then we probably, mainly because I want to see if I need to add more boards and where to put down the donation bins up here. Uh, based off of where the guests actually gather. Because from building these platforms before, you know, you think that they'll gather where you pre-place the items. They don't always do that, however. So this just saves me the hassle of having to move stuff around. 
but anyway, let's go ahead and kind of just drop in our pandas. I think I already sent a keeper to bring them over. Yeah, they're, they're in transit, so we need to unpause this. Zoo finance, we're only slightly negative, so that's okay. I'm low welfare, so are they still stressed? Yeah, they are trying to hide, but can't. Where is he at? Where he can't... Dude, you're literally invisible. Um, what you talking about, Willis? Um, all right, fine. Maybe it's these windows. They don't like these windows. So what I'm going to do is just turn this all into standard brick wall. And maybe that will fix the issue. Now it'll force people... Yeah, you want to see them come up to our viewing platform up here. And maybe that will help. Hopefully it does. I don't like seeing the animals stressed like that, uh, especially without a tooltip kind of explaining, oh, this is why they're upset. Um, but that's fine. Here come the keepers. So they access the habitat via staff path. The guests actually aren't even on this level until they come down to the walk-in enclosure. So kind of what my thought is with this is this might open up over here and then turn into a normal path that loops back out and around, and then we'll connect more exhibits out off of this. So you basically walk through the frontal exhibits here, and then you end up here. So we'll maybe have two really big high appeal animals out here, and then we'll probably be ready to move on to a secondary zoo for our franchise. So yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, our pandas have been placed. Of course, they are low welfare because there's no plants or anything for them yet. Uh, let's see. Oh, really? There's not enough space in here? Okay, that's fine. Let's go ahead and expand this then. I'm kind of surprised by that, but also understandable. Good buddies, so we will expand this a little bit. It's probably because of the water, so like they need more land than what's currently available, or what have you. Connect it there, delete that one out. And honestly, what I'm going to do here is we're going to discrete this angle a little bit more. Kind of like that. Now, that, uh, I would hope to God that's enough space for them. I mean, geez, El Piso, if not. Oh, not enough climbing space is what that's about. Okay, fine. Get over yourself. That should be a, bu that should be a different tooltip. Like, this should have an expandable menu to let you know that, I feel like. But that's okay. So, fine. Now they have a really massive habitat, which is okay. I do plan on breeding out these pandas, because why not? Um, let's go ahead and hit habitat. We're going to filter by species. Red panda. Cool. And we're going to do custom climbing areas and shelters and all that goodness. But let's go ahead and place down a couple arboreal feeding platforms just down on the ground to ensure that they have access to food. Enrichment item wise, we do actually have some stuff for them apparently. Uh, so we are going to throw down a tree forager over here. We're going to put down some wind chimes over here. That'll max their enrichment. Uh, we need to go through the terrain, but that's fine. We're going to work on that in just a second. So enrichment's good. It just hasn't updated if I unpause. Now their enrichment's max. So terrain wise, let's hop into our terrain painter. So since we expanded this big massive thing out, we now have a bunch of long grass in the habitat that we can't have and they need more soil. So we are gonna increase our size from two to like 13 because we need to cover a large, large area. And honestly, that is enough to kind of satisfy them. But what I wanna do since our short grass is kind of low is uh, since we were up on a really big size brush, if I move this down to like an eight and kind of just like sporadically do that, it will blend the terrain really well. So there's a little bit of long grass, decent amount of short grass, and then there's soil is fine and I think they like a little bit of rock yeah they do so there we go now they have a blend of all the terrains pretty much throughout the habitat so not one area is so one area like it looks pretty consistent you know you can kind of see patches here and there where there's more stone and where there's more like sand or soil or whatever than grass but that's okay um, now we need to go ahead and get the plants placed. So if you click all three of these, so if you click the continent and the biomes, 
within the animal page, it will add those filters into your nature sort. So that's way faster to get what plants exactly are good for the animal because all, these are the plants that they're content with without needing to add a species filter. So I figured that out kind of just plain. It's good to note though, because my goodness, uh, sometimes it takes forever just getting the filter set up. So I'm gonna start out with a little basic like tree placement, kind of the way I do my habitat design. I like to start with trees and then I move on to like uh, bushes and ferns and doing the lower terrain underneath. But I'm kind of just placing some stuff around to give the pandas some variety and where they might want to go stand. Because as I understand it, since their bar allows for 100% placement of foliage, they are gonna be happier the more plants you have inside of their habitat. Now putting in these beech trees, they're nice because they fill a lot of area, but sometimes you don't want a massive tree like that. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna scatter a couple of these around just to fill some bigger chunks of space uh, from the upper or aerial position, you know? Uh, we'll maybe put one over here, maybe put one over here and that's probably good on those. You don't want to use too many of the same type of plants, otherwise the habitat just looks boring. But if you mix the trees to the right ratios and stuff like that, it can turn out really beautiful. Now these ash trees are a different height, which is good. I'm just cycling through a little bit. So I want a couple more taller trees, uh, or similar height, but maybe not as large of a radius as these beech trees. So these ash tree, variant three, I believe are a good choice now this is costing a ridiculous amount of money so just be prepared to spend you know a few thousand of the little dollars down here uh to <laughs> you know lay out your habitat like this but if you do it this way it should look fairly good your animals should be fairly happy there will be diversity in it so it'll be interesting to look at now what I'm going to do for the short tier trees is I'm going to scatter a few cherry blossoms around because it's a pink color whereas the rest of these are various shades of green. So it'll really help draw uh, out specific areas in the tree line um, when you do this. So like mixing the colors a little bit like this is really good I feel like. Um, and you can see that kind of in my other habitats I've utilized a similar method where you kind of like just mix these tree layers then you go in and do the bushes so that's probably enough trees let's go ahead and get some bamboo i'm assuming that these guys are going to want you know some bamboo in their habitat so what i'm going to use or do first is place this strip bamboo along the edge of my wall here and that will just it, it helps make the the water source feel a little bit more natural. It's not like, oh, here's this pond that leads up into a giant brick wall. That looks ugly, right? But if you put this bamboo in front of it, it makes it look a little bit more natural because unfortunately, the way the terrain works in this game, you kind of get these like sheer cliffs uh, sometimes when you're digging these water features, or at least I do. I'm probably doing it the wrong way or something, but anyway. So this is a way I use to kind of make it look a little bit better. Okay. And you don't have to get super advanced with the placement for this first layer. We'll probably go back over this and break up the monotony of using the same like little strip bamboo uh, with some other bushes or foliage or what have you. But there. So we kind of have the water line outlined with some of this stuff. That's pretty good. What we can do with these smaller birch trees, or birch trees, they kind of can fill these sparser areas, like so. So like that area is kind of sparse. If I can get it to place, sometimes you have to fiddle with it to get what you want, uh, but that's all right. It doesn't take, like it can take a little bit of time, but it's not that bad. So there we go. That's pretty good for the water level I feel like or water feature um, I'm starting to get pretty low on money I should probably resume play here fairly quickly so we don't run out um, okay here's what we're gonna do so they definitely have plants and stuff we need to build a climbing area 
and hard shelter for them. So before we get too carried away, let's go ahead and get that done. We're going to put that stuff right here in this clearing is what I'm thinking. So let's go back over to the habitat view and let's start building this climbing platform. So what I'm going to do first is get the ramp kind of figured out. And, I, and what I want for this is I want like two, potentially three different platforms uh, that all are at different heights. So like I want to do... And, and like I don't want to use the same right here I'll you'll kind of get the idea of what I'm trying to go for in just a moment so we're gonna start with kind of two but not quite two full planks going up to this first level and I'm gonna build the staircase first or the platforms first that way the animals can hopefully access this and I messed up already and didn't pull this far enough forward uh, there we go okay so that's going to be platform height number one. Then we're going to build the second tier. And I think these wider ramps are maybe better. Uh, whoa, what did I just do? Uh, go away. There we go. Stupid. Uh, Ryzen. Or not Ryzen, but AMD interface thing that I don't want to look at right now. <laughs> um, not while I'm building this aerial platform, please no. Don't tell me what my GPU statistics are. I already know they're bad. I already know it's probably hotter than what it wants to be, but you know what? You just gotta, you gotta deal. It's for the pandas. It's for the pandas computer. You should understand. Uh, no, I'm joking around, but uh, let's go ahead and get this stuff all done so this will be kind of the second layer like so and what I'm gonna do just so it kind of like deviates I'm gonna kind of bring this one out like this then uh, we're gonna branch the platform off at an angle going into this like tree line is what I want to do Because I think that'll be kind of nice for them, right? Like, they can go get shaded by the trees uh, and access this, sec like, tertiary platform. They've got two back here that are kind of secluded because there's trees blocking. Uh, and then we'll maybe put some enrichment item or something out this way to entice them to come to this third platform to do X, Y, or Z. You know what I'm saying? And in addition, all of this platforming that we're placing qualifies as hard shelter for the animals or all the area underneath it so like you're getting two uses out of it pandas need climbing area like that is something they need uh, and then in addition you get hard shelter out of it so i'm going to just go ahead and switch this one over to these bigger platforms because now i'm going to be laying the floors primarily as opposed to building ramps so to start with Let's kind of just angle this around a little bit, get it, you know, lined up more or less. And this probably needs to come forward slightly. Okay, good enough. And we're gonna leave that be because realistically, I don't like using these giant squares when I'm building my decking because it makes it feel as if you're using like just a cookie cutter mold almost, uh, which is not what I'm going for. So we're gonna use these smaller pieces because then I can kind of vary the shape a little bit better I can vary the size of each of the respective platforms a little bit more and it might turn it'll look a little bit more unique than just here's some squares up in the air that your pandas may or may not want to walk on so we're gonna do something like this so we still got 1500 in the bank so I'm okay with that They should be able to access that, I feel. Um, all right. That's not... We might build, like, a little walkway here. That meets up. Sure. We'll do something like that. Uh, maybe bring one more out, like so. Cool. And I think that that's pretty good for that platform. We are going to build this one out a little bit more. Um, so this is kind of what I do when I design out my habitats. I go through and do stuff in steps. Sometimes... 
I get a large chunk of progress done on one thing and then just leave it and it's good enough because I spent enough time on it. And other times I'll kind of bounce between projects just to kind of diversify what I'm working with because sometimes you get bored of placing the same object and dealing with all these weirdo angles and all that it can get frustrating so sometimes it's refreshing to switch over to like placing trees or what have you um, as opposed to placing a uh, platform okay so something like that that's pretty good that's pretty good and then let's go ahead and shape up this one real quick and this one we're just going to use the smaller ones I think since we have a big square already doesn't need to be that much more area but I just want to kind of blend the shape a little bit better so it's not like here's a square uh, you know um, another cool thing I might also try to do and I think I'm going to now that I'm thinking of it uh, on these backs uh, or what I'm gonna or well it actually kind of needs to be right about here so if I angle a couple of these up, I can put this like smaller little outcropping on at the apex of their like little climbing area like that and kind of carry this around the corner. slide that back a little bit okay good enough that's enough deck um, that should satisfy their climbing climbing space requirement and give us extra room if we add more so let's just unpause so it can update real quick update please update please perfect so we've got plenty of land space we've got plenty of climbing space the terrain distribution is correct. Our environment's pretty good. They have almost 70% plant coverage and they only require about 10%. All the trees are inside of their natural habitat, so they're content with that. Um, realistically speaking, we're pretty much done. Uh, the only thing I would like to do is add in some bedding. So we need to throw in, and I think I'm gonna use the leaves this time around. So I like to kinda see where I'm at so let, let's go ahead and place like a couple pieces of bedding like so well that one's not very good let's like rotate it put it like that okay it's one little area and I'm doing this because sometimes they like to lay up top sometimes they like to lay down below uh, depending on what the weather is doing so like having bedding in multiple areas is useful in making sure your animals are happy. I also will probably put in a couple of like support pillars for the bottoms of these. Uh, so like you can do these types of deals and they look reasonably good. They have a decent amount of detail. So like that, but I need it a little bit. Let's actually go back here. So this is going to be a piece we can use for this part. And we can use it for the other part. I'm just looking for, okay, what's going to be the easiest one where I can just place it and have it the way I want, so like that. And then, whoops. Not what I wanted to do at all. Just drop that out. Okay, cool. Uh, underneath here, we're going to take some climbable log. And actually, it's better if you do go into the advanced move mode and then click the arrow 
because it automatically prepares to place a secondary or a, another one in the same position, so it makes it easier to move around when you're building these like custom structures, I find. Uh, sure, I think that's pretty much where it needs to be. Uh, not quite. Dang it. That does happen sometimes, so... Sometimes it's more about getting the camera angle correct as opposed to, like, actually getting the placement of the block correct. But yeah, uh, let's see. Um, is that aligned? Let's maybe bring it in just a little bit. Shift it that way. Yeah, I think that'll work. Uh, okay, we're gonna need more than that. Okay, cool. <laughs> That's a really tall platform, geez. Uh, all right. Good enough. We'll leave it at that for now, and we'll just kind of say, through the magic of <laughs> the trees being close by, it's levitating in the air. And that's what I'm going to say, and yeah, good enough. Let's put some enrichment items up here, hopefully they'll come up. And I do want to put down, like, an arboreal feeder. Uh, whoa, okay. I didn't realize these were this big. Jeez. So maybe... Let's delete out this dog ball, or whatever they want to call it, and we're going to put one of these guys up here. I'm pretty sure our keepers will be able to access that. I don't see why they wouldn't be. Let's just go ahead, habitat, traversable, uh, where is one of my pandas? Uh, let's just double check. I'm pretty sure they can, yep, they can climb everything. Dope. That's great. They can access the water from a few different areas, even though they can't access it right there. If I click on staff, that's not how you do it. Okay, uh, I guess needs happiness, I don't care about. Okay, whatever. I'm assuming the staff can access it as well. I'm just going to save my zoo because we've placed a lot of different entities in here and it would be a shame to have to redo that. But let's go ahead and turn, turn the clock back on and let stuff go and kind of see how it is. Now, I would like to place some bushes on the underground here. Um, I just don't quite have the money to do it right this second. Okay, why are you stressed though? Like friends, you've got areas to hide. Don't go swimming in the lake if you want to hide, I guess. Like, I don't know what to tell you. Oh well, whatever. They'll get over it. <laughs> or they won't. Um, yeah, see, one of them got over it, so it's fine. Um, I don't know how to deal with that specific issue where, like, randomly they get upset about people looking at them. Uh, we're about to get a bunch more Nile monitors, which is good. One of our little trophy things is to reduce or is to release now monitors so that's great hop inside of the animal tab here take a look at our fellas uh i think our breeding pair probably has one more generation left in them so we'll leave those be for now so basically all the nile monitors that are produced here we're gonna send off into the wild i think uh we'll double check and kind of look at the genetics and everything but I'm just going to speed it up to top speed real quick. Uh, well, so these now monitors, you know, get born a little bit quicker. And then I can pause it after they all mature and kind of go through and move into the trade center. I think we have more than five. Should be all of them. Yeah, it is. Okay, cool. What I'm going to do, send them all to the trade center. Boom. Uh, turn that back down. Cool go to animal trading and, and it's easier to manage these guys in the trade center it really is it really really is um so let's just look at the stats on some of these so 200s but he has a 50 uh what is our breeding pair 200s 
from 100. Okay. So, like, on our gals in here. This one is slightly better stat than the breeding pair one. So we could try to get another good male Nile monitor and just refresh the Jeden pool. But I think what I'm going to do is we're going to try to get more money out of this initial or these this pair that we had in the habitat initially that produced all of these guys and kind of just go from there. So these ones, the silver and the no badge, I'm definitely just going to release the wild. That'll get us the quest because I only need to do one and 113 conservation credits. So it's not that bad anyway. Claim reward. Cool. And then on the rest of them, I, I kind of want to look at their stats first. So that one's not amazing. That one has 200. So that one's pretty good. That one has 200. It's pretty good. So this one does not. We're going to release 65 tokens out of that. Uh, so that's a 200, that's 200. That one's not, so this one can be released. And then this one's 200 percenters. That one's being moved, that one's being moved. Okay, so I have this one and this one that I could potentially trade. So if I try to trade it, it, it says 117 versus the 62. 107 versus 52 so i mean in theory we're losing about 50 dollars just releasing them or 50 of these leaf tokens but i don't really care i don't want to wait for the trade to tick through it normally doesn't at the price i set anyway so i'm not even gonna bother but cool we did that i do want to kind of just look what are our guests saying at the moment i guess the view of the removed species is okay from here yeah well that's good it's just a habitat at this point fam uh, let's go 15 and 8 on our ticket prices. Because we did just place, you know, some pretty expensive animals. Like, we had basically the cost of these pandas, the binturongs, and those first two lemurs was close to 1,300 conservation credits. Granted, we almost have 500 again. So it's not that difficult to get the, that many. But, like, they were expensive. Don't get me wrong. Like, if you click on one of these, they're... Their gold badge, appeal 3831. So I'm assuming that people are going to want to come look at the pandas. I'm hoping. Like, if they don't, then we just spent a lot of money on nothing. Uh, I thought I had placed a speaker, but it looks like I haven't. So what I'm going to do is I am going to get a speaker kind of like in the center here. About the red pandas. And then we can just increase the radius out like that. It's still not really impacting. Well, it slightly impacts that platform there, so... Let's kind of shrink that so it's not touching their platform. Still almost covers both of them. So what I'm going to do is actually move one to right there. And then I'm going to duplicate it and place the second one like right there. Cool. And this does need to move just slightly so those aren't overlapping. But I think that should be just fine. There's all of our education facilities should be in place now. I am going to just haphazardly place some donation bins around and see how that works for us. Hopefully, you know, the homies donate because that's the whole point uh, of the spends like this outside of just being able to see the cool animals. Um, but okay, so there are some people coming down. They haven't, you know, fully utilized the path yet, but here. Make some donations. Don't leave. Okay. We'll put a board right here. It does kind of make sense to have it up this far because, you know, we do have pandas at this point. So, or like you can see the pandas from there. So, oh, temperature. I forgot about this. Okay, so yeah, yeah, yeah. They need a different temperature. I am so sorry, my pandas. Let me look at your Zoopedia. What climate do you need? Uh, zero to 29 degrees. So yeah, it's a little bit warm for them. So the way you deal with this, you go into Habitat, you go to Heaters, Coolers, and we're going to grab coolers because we're trying to cool them off. So you basically need to have coolers everywhere your pandas might end up standing. Uh, because if you don't, anytime they stand somewhere where there isn't a cooler, they will have an issue with their happiness. So I'm going to set this down at like 20 degrees. I feel that's a good medium between their ideal, like it's sits 
pretty much in the center of their ideal temperature zone. So I'm hoping that will be good enough. Since I've duplicated this, I shouldn't have to reset the temperature, I don't think. Uh, we'll kind of play that by here. But what I'm going to do is kind of place these, kind of eyeballing the circle, or the circles, or radius, whatever you want to call it, of the cooler. And then we're going to unpause the game and leave this heat map turned on. So this is the temperature heat map. And it'll tell us, you know, is this area actually being cool? or if there's like gaps in our placement, we'll be able to see it. So let's go ahead and let that run for a moment. It all should be close to the same color after these run. And we might have too many, but see, we missed one there, so we'll place one there. We missed one up here, so we'll place one up here. And that should hopefully resolve the temperature issues that they were having, their welfare issues, because it was too hot. And this might also entice guests to come over if they're warm because some of the temperature radius is, you know, up on this path. So you can utilize the heaters and coolers to, you know, attend to your guest needs as well. We got some more leaf insects. That's always good. So what we're going to do is just pick a new male and female. They all should be pretty much the same stat. So we'll pick this guy and this guy. Move the rest of the Trade Center. Let's just double check. So your genetics pretty much standard for what our insects have been same for you so perfect and we've got a bunch of money we can make quick trade 2400 cool i'll take it i'll take it uh what is this what is this vet research cool i do want to get some research completed on the pandas i started on the binturongs he's still working away on that i almost have all the diseases researched or at least I did almost have them all researched, but I think I'm going to switch this guy off of the disease research to this. Oh, these are related? That's super annoying because inbreeding is going to kill their stats. God damn it. Uh, that's frustrating. That's not the first pair of animals I bought off the Trade Center that were related. Um, I mean, I could probably afford another Binturong and fix that issue, but I don't really want to. So we're not going to. We're just going to let them do what they're going to do. Uh, now, this is ultimately going to be a lemur habitat. And lemurs are cool. So if I go into our animal chain, we've got the lemurs we're going to place in here. So we're going to click on our red rough-tailed lemur because why not? Good good looking fella in here. Um, and I was hoping there would be a Zoopedia quick link, but there is not. Uh, so red rough lemur is just one down from the pandas. So their temperature range is perfect for the region that we're in. So that's good. We won't have to add heaters or coolers. They do need climbing space and they need a fair amount of space land wise, which we have. We can do the climbing space for them and the land space we pretty much have already. Uh, on this, can I set this higher up to like 17? Is that the solution or are people pissed because the tickets are too expensive? Bigger, better zoos. Fam, we've got like red pandas and stuff in the back. You're only at the entrance standing by a plant. Go check out the actual zoo before you say that. Zoo ticket price is good. Zoo ticket price is good. Okay, cool. So we were able to justify that. What I'm going to do on this, instead of doing the sun bear, I'm going to switch this over to red panda. Just because I think this might drive people over. So there we go. Yeah, go take a look at our pandas. It's pretty dope. They're cute as well. They're like little red fox boys. Let's actually go take a look at them now that we have the habitat all built. We got a VIP guest. What up, my guy? Thanks for the 20 conservation credits. Uh, and then the crime one, I'm not 100% sure what to do. We already have security cameras, so I mean, whatever. Uh, boa constrictor education and release something to the wild. Okay. So how are our other dudes going? So the iguanas are fine. Anaconda has one too many. So we will move this guy. This is our boas. Our boas are okay. Do we have a speaker for the boa constrictor? It looks like we do. Okay, cool, we got the first year of research on our little uh, ferret looking dudes. So let's see if we can find one. Um, this guy, 
What's up with you, my friend? Don't be distressed. Like, look at all these plants you've got. You don't, like, hide from what? I just don't understand. I guess, what kind of, what kind of tree is this? We'll just duplicate one of these. Here. Does that make you happy? I think this needs to move because it made that unaccessible. There. Put it like right there. Don't be so upset, please. Please, please. Cladded leopard. Uh, I think we probably need more keepers. So I'm going to pause that real quick. Take a look at our staff. We've got the money we can afford more staff. So not a big deal. Uh, low workload for our educator. That's kind of annoying. High workload on the one mechanic. Uh, caretakers. They're doing fine. I think our vendors are fine. I mean, these guys have efficient workload, but if I add one more keeper in, I think that might just make it a little bit better. Set the work zone. Uh, and then I guess we can throw in... That should be enough, I feel like. I don't know. Where's our anaconda? In here. Nutrition. I mean, he's fine. This guy's stressed because of plant cover as well. So, like, the habitats are a good starting point with the trees and stuff that I've done. But I still need to go through, like, the clouded leopard habitat. I need to go through and add more bushes is what I need to do. And this habitat, I need to do the same. Um, I probably could get away with doing more bushes and stuff in this guy's habitat. It's just, I don't understand the stress stat. Like, I don't know what affects that. Because literally there's no windows on this habitat. And I wouldn't think that they'd be able to tell they're, they're being watched from the air. Which, if they can, that's kind of annoying uh, to a certain extent. But whatever. It's fine. We're just going to leave that be. Because I want to finish, or I want to get this lemur thing going. So what we're going to do, we're going to go into our animals. Or let's go back and talk about what I actually wanted to talk about with the with the lemurs. So if you look up the lemurs on species data, the ringtail and the red ruff are basically exactly the same. So you can have one male with up to 30 females or 29 females at a time. So getting a good stat male, which I have one for each species, uh, is important. And then you basically just fill the rest of the enclosure with like four or five different females and you will breed a ton of them because they're polygamous which means that one male will breed with all the females in the habitat. They only take two and a half years to reach maturity, so it's two and a half in-game time until you will be able to release, release them to wild, quick trade them, or trade them normal, whatever. Um, and they live for a long time, so 20 years of sexual sterility. So we have like five-year-old lemurs. They're going to last for 15 in-game years before I have to replace them, right? So that's pretty good. Uh, one to four offspring per event, that's pretty good as well. So you might get up to four of them every time they breed. And they only have a, a one-year waiting period or one-year cooldown before they actually can breed again. Uh, the other cool thing, so red ruffed and ring-tailed lemurs can share habitat space. So we're going to put them both in the same area. And then the other thing is can guest enter habitat says yes, which means you can build a guest gate, which is what we've got up front, and a little path for them to walk on. And the guests can come through and walk through this path. And kind of, I've set this up so there's conservation boards. And then once I put the lemurs in, I can set these boards to talk about the lemurs. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the plan with this. I think it might be kind of a cool exhibit. Um, and then what I could do as well is potentially put like an information center or a drink shop or something inside of this enclosure. And I believe guests can, can, you know, access those. So they might, it could be like, come grab your food here. We can build like a little shopping pavilion out or like seating area out here. And you can eat with the lemurs type of a deal. But let's get the lemurs in. Then we can get, you know, the terrain set up the right way. Uh, is this named? It is not. So let's name this Red Pandas. This is going to be Lemurs. Uh, 
And while we're waiting for our keepers to come over, we're going to go ahead and reset this and get our species set to lemur. And it's ringtail. They should have the exact same because they literally are like the same animal. Uh, the 